Check this out. Chang'e 5. China's so-called successful moon landing from last year. I've got two clips. One I've seen before. The other is totally new to me. Both, as you can imagine, are terrible. And of course, highlight this for the charade that it is. First up, we got the Chang'e 5 separation as the craft supposedly prepares itself to land on the moon. So let's have a look. As you can imagine, there's a hell of a lot of CGI to wade through here to get to the actual bit of footage. I find this shot very telling, the control room. An image, some CGI animations and lots of data and not much else. You would have thought in this day and age to further advance things and of course to make things easier, you'd have a, at least one camera constantly streaming 24-7. Not only to explore space, but to, of course, keep an eye on things and make sure things go smoothly and give you a further understanding should things go wrong. Of course, no, we get the usual tosh. Um, no wonder they look so bored in the control room. Let's get to the actual bit of footage provided, the separation here. Two things to pay particular attention to. One, the moon. <sighs> Button moonish. Look at the edges of the moon, look at the moon itself, and of course to the craft. Again, it's got a touch of the Blue Peter, blended with someone who's got a tin foil fetish, who's just gone way overboard here. Put the two together, and what do you get? An historical Chinese moon landing. <laughs> so let's have a look. Terrible footage. You've essentially got a Thunderbird style prop and a Button Moon style moon. Terrible, guys. If you want to get on in this space pantomime game, you really need to up your game. I mean, it's not easy. NASA are the main players and they're terrible. But this Tosh, this is almost as bad as India's sightings, citations of so-called achievements in space. Ridiculous. Look at it. Is the moon even moving? Let me come back. Is the moon even moving? I'm not so sure. Either way, it's shockingly bad. And we come to the control room. Hardly edgy you see stuff going on here as these people look at the numbers on the screen. I don't even know if they've actually got that shot that we've just seen. I can't work out if that's been blended on top there. Because not many seem to be paying a bit attention to it. It's more about the numbers. One appears to be looking up there, but that could be something that was behind the screen. Ridiculous. Now this is a month or so later, where the craft supposedly landed took some samples and now is returning back to the main orbiting spacecraft and is now looking to dock. This is the footage I haven't seen before and this is old school Thunderbird at its best. So let's have a look. Supposed to be docking, returning home with the dock, with the goods. I mean, look at the state of this. Look here. Thunderbirds were better build quality and more convincing. Terrible. And again. Kidding me, right? An automatic dock of two models. <laughs> Look at that. Let's pause it there and appreciate that. Wonderful bit of modelling. Again, you're free to believe this, Tosh, if that tickles your fancy. But this is the only evidence that is cited now as reasons we live on a scientifically impossible ball. Space. Or the stars. I mean, the stars are a red herring. So you're left with space. <laughs> um, which, quite frankly, is a mixture of pantomime, models, CGI, hairspray fetishes, harnesses. You name it, they chuck it in there, mockery. You've only got to look at recent achievements, this so-called moon landing by China and then returning with goods and docking. Look at it. 
Look. This is their footage, not me. Look. China clearly have got a long way to go in this space pantomime production circuit. They're at 1960s NASA level here with these Thunderbird style models and just terrible. Again, this is the only evidence left that, to, to try and prove that you live on a ball. And you're essentially looking at ridiculous bits of footage that are actually mocking the people that defend this. Dear, oh dear.